What's going on, Steph? Uh, how did the foot feel when you woke up, and how confident are you that you can go on Friday without being limited? Uh, I'm going to play. That's all, I, that's, all I, that's all I know right now. Kendra in the middle. What have the past 12 hours been like for you, just in terms of recovery treatment for your foot? Uh, about 10 and a half hours of sleep, a couple of dunks in the ice bucket, and that's about it for now. And then take advantage of the day and tomorrow to get completely ready for the game, um, get as much recovery and healing as possible, and uh, understand how important game four is. And I'm excited about the opportunity. Joe? Hey, Steph, did you get any imaging? And I know you just got over a left foot sprain. Was, was, is this a re-aggravation of that of any kind? Uh, because I went through what I went through at the end of the regular season and coming back, I know exactly what it is, what I got to deal with, and the soreness slash pain level and all that. So once I got checked out last night, I knew I wouldn't have to go get <clears throat> any extra tests just because we've been through this before. Um, and there's a good understanding of what it is, same foot and all that. So um, there's, I guess, comfort knowing I've been through it before, but also you'd rather not have to deal with something like that at this point in the season. Robert on the left. By Manning, CLNS Media. Steph. How surprising is it to see some drop coverage out there against you? I don't know how often you see that, given the shooter you are. And how do you try to respond to some of that coverage? Are you just trying to shoot over it again and again? And did they adjust that all in the fourth? You understand personnel. Like, you, they have a certain lineup with their length and size that you're not going to really see many blitzes just because I don't think it's physically possible to run around as much as I do and how many you know screens we can we can throw at them. Um, so they're doing a pretty solid job for most of the game, trying to take away the three, keeping bodies on bodies and stuff like that. Uh, in the fourth quarter, we started the game, or started the fourth quarter, first couple possessions with turnovers, and we kind of got sped up a little bit. Um, and then... They were pretty smart in terms of who they were trying to come off of and clog, you know, driving lanes and send extra bodies and attention that honestly those patterns really don't make sense, but they were just super aggressive um, across the board. So we got something for that. And obviously if we take care of the ball and settle in, it can set a totally different tone for, you know, the fourth quarter and then obviously offense and defense are connected. You have to get stops in order to maintain momentum, um, you know, down the stretch. And in game one and <clears throat> game three, we didn't do that. And it showed in terms of only getting, uh, whatever, 16 points or something like that in the, in the fourth quarter. So um, we obviously know we got to be better. Anthony on the right. The first time you sprained the foot, you tried to run, went right back to the locker room, couldn't really play on it. This time, you did play a few possessions. How did it feel in those few possessions? And then did that also lead you to believe that it's less serious? Oh, for sure. Like I said, I've been – it's almost the identical type play. This one just wasn't as bad as that one. Um, and as soon as you start to take a couple steps, you kind of know whether you can – run normal, cut normal or not. Back then I couldn't, yesterday I could, so that gave me a little bit of confidence knowing <clears throat> um, it wasn't as bad, but see how it feels tomorrow. I know I'm gonna play, but just see how it responds to that type of impact. Question in the middle. Nicole Zepeña from Dominican Republic. You are the one of the most feared players in the game. What is the key for your consistency? Just confidence in what I can do and what you know how we how we play as a team, um, and the fact that you know we've been here plenty of times before, and that experience comes with a sense of you know composure and understanding of how I can be effective. So every night you try to hold yourself to that standard, and 
you know, hopefully that leads to wins. Candace in the back. Hey, Seth, just for context, um, even though it's a injury to a lesser degree than the previous one, if this was the regular season, would you envision yourself sitting out this next game? Hmm. It's a tough one to answer. I don't know. Depending on where we were in the season, and context is everything. So I don't, I don't, I don't know how to answer that. <laughs> Put Om um, up front here. Uh, Steph Om um, Young, this is like ESPN. Uh, if Draymond after the game the other night said he played like expletive and then said he was soft, knowing him, how do you think he'll respond tomorrow night, especially after how the crowd was really on him? I mean, the same way he kind of did in game two with the same emotion, but just focus on impacting the game on both ends of the floor. Um, we've been in hostile environments before. We understand what the emotions are like. Um, I think even from, like, speaking to you asking about Draymond, but even for me, like, the first quarter, my first foul, threw me off a little bit in terms of like the tone of the game and you know, I get the second one and you know he's aware of that I'm aware of that we're all trying to figure out how aggressive physically you can be and then you just get distracted and everything else becomes amplified and um, you know the fact that we clawed our way back in the third quarter and you know him was a part of that defensively for sure all that you have to kind of bottle up and know if we can just you know, execute our game plan, be the most physical team, uh, come with you know multiple efforts on defense, be decisive on offense, and we don't have to reinvent the wheel at all. It's just play better uh, across the board. Um, we all need to do that, and uh, I, know, I know Draymond will help lead that lead that that, that charge. Uh, you know, tomorrow just like he did in game two, and um, you know get back in the series. Got time for a few more for Steph. Maddie over here. Steph, kind of a two-parter question. Um, first off, like, what would you say your level of pain is right now? Uh, I, I don't know. How to, I don't know how to answer that one either because I'm just comparing it to what it was before, and I'm good enough to play. So. Then, off of that, you said that you know the first the few possessions that you played after the injury kind of gave made you realize it wasn't as bad as the first one. But is there any concern about how this might like affect your mobility? No, even with the last one, when I first came back and started testing it out and getting ready to play, it never got worse based on uh, ramping up your intensity and all that. It's just the pain tolerance thing that you got to deal with. So um, obviously at this point in the season, if you're good enough or in the, in the series, if you're good enough to play, play. Harris in the middle. Steph, what is it like to be under the, in the injury microscope? And then do you wonder in your career, do you have the most scrutinized ankles, feet, legs in the NBA? <laughs> uh, I thought I was well past that for sure. Um, but it's just something that's part of what we do and, you know, it's, it's, I guess the only thing is you're quick to be able to self-assess, really, you know, based on whatever you, the injury felt like. Like, I think to Anthony's question, when I did it in the regular season, I knew it right away, like something was severely wrong. Last night I knew I was hurt, but it was not as bad, and I could kind of, you know, gauge whether I should stay out there or not, not do any more damage. And then that's why I'm very confident I'm gonna play tomorrow and keep it keep it moving. So you become your own doctor to a certain extent, based on all the different episodes that you've had. I don't know if that's a good thing or not, but it is La what it is. Last question to Marcus. Marcus Thompson, the athletic. Steph, you've been uh, driving a lot. Hold on, my phone's going. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, repeat, re repeat what you said. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, I, caught, I caught me off guard. Good job. Uh, you, you've been driving quite a bit this series. Uh, how important is getting into the paint for you and, and how you're attacking the defense uh, and the way they're approaching you? And what are some things that they're doing to try to thwart that? 
I mean, every defense we play usually is trying to take away the three first and foremost, and that opens up driving lanes, and just the threat of being able to shoot allows you to drive. They have rim protection when Robert's out there, and so, you know, it's a big part of why their defense is, you know, ranked as high as it is, and why it's been a difference in a couple of these games, because you, you, you know he's back there, you know he's coming, and even if he's not directly in the paint, he's guarding somebody off the ball, he's going to be flying in there, so... We have to be able to create those advantages with our drives. Doesn't necessarily mean you're always going to get to the rim and finish, but it's a great way for us to create, you know, open looks um, and just put pressure on them. But we have to be decisive with, you know, what we have to make the, the right decision once you get in there. Whether that's, you know, if you do have a clear lane finish, if you, you know, see somebody pulling over or Robert coming, you know, trying to, you know, protect the rim, kick it, find an open man. Uh, but you can't be stubborn thinking. We're just going to keep driving in there and trying to finish over those guys because uh, that's what they do well. So it's on us to uh, take advantage because we can get in the paint pretty much whenever. It's just what do, what do you do with it when you get in there? And uh, certain games we've done it well and some, some we haven't. Thanks, Steph.